All right, in this video, we're going to see how to apply Stokes' theorem. And Stokes' theorem relates the uh, surface integral of the curl of a vector field to a line integral uh, around the boundary of that surface. Um, and so when you're applying Stokes' theorem in practice, uh, it's usually relating one of these integrals to it, the other one. Uh, to try to find a, an easier or even just possible integration. You know, sometimes one of them is not possible, and so you use Stokes' theorem to go to the one that is possible. Sometimes one is just a lot easier, and so you go to the easier one. Um, but just learning this, we'll probably be able to use both forms, um, but then one might be easier. So we'll just kind of stop and think which way uh, of integration is easier, um, and then ultimately try to do it both ways uh, and get the same result to validate the theorem itself. So you need a vector field. We've got a three-dimensional vector field here, f, and uh, it's negative 18yz in the first component, 18xz in the second component, and then 12 times the quantity x squared plus y squared uh, all times z in the third component. And the surface we have is part of a paraboloid z equals x squared plus y squared inside the cylinder, uh, unit cylinder uh, oriented along the z axis, x squared plus y squared equals one. Um, and then we're orienting the surface upward. All right, so in step one, I have a setting up the line integral part of this, uh, of the vector field around the boundary. Uh, and then in step two, I have us setting up the surface integral. Um, and then we determine which is easier, and then we evaluate it. So uh, there might be some prep work here where you want to uh, look at graphing the surface. Um, if it's not obvious how the surface uh, relates to the boundary C, um, then this would be a good place to start. I don't have it listed as a formal step, but um, we'll go ahead and put in the paraboloid. All right, and then what's kind of uh, limiting that paraboloid is this cylinder. It makes those the same color. All right, so now we can kind of see what the surface we're working with is, right? So it is this piece of the paraboloid chopped off right here, right? The paraboloid that's inside the cylinder. Now, remember, the cylinder is radius one. Um, and so that's going to set this intersection, right, as center. So that, that ring where they intersect, that's actually C, uh, the boundary of this. And when we go to parameterize that, right, uh, it would just be parameterized with one parameter, because it's just a curve. And it's a unit circle, but it's on the, the plane z equals 1, right? So cosine t, sine t, that creates that unit circle, because this is still r equals 1, right? Um, but it's got z equal to 1, because that's where we're at. So that's the parameterization of that boundary, c. And then for the surface, s, uh, the parameterization is going to have to have two parameters, u and v. And, uh, you know, each of these is also a circle, right? So it's going to be uh, u cosine v and u sine v, where v is acting kind of like theta. And then u is acting kind of like r. Um, so obviously, uh, 
V would go from zero to two pi, and then U uh, would go from zero to one. And then to make it not just be a cone, you know, remember this, this curve here acts kind of like Z equals R squared. And so that would be a U squared because it's a para parabola, right? Uh, well, we didn't do the limits for T. Uh, T is like theta, right? And so it would just go from zero to two pi to trace out that full circle. So that gives us the parameterization of the surface S and then the boundary C. We'll use C in the line integral. Uh, we'll integrate along that line. Um, and then we'll use S in the surface integral. So that really should be step one, honestly. Uh, need to redo it and do that. Um, and then, you know, these processes have been covered before the line integral, vector line integral, and vector surface integrals. Um, so you, you probably want to take a look at previous videos. Um, I have some numbered substeps here, um, but if you haven't looked at these before, it's going to be a little intense to do them both now. All right, so starting with the line integral, we already set up our parameterization. Cosine t, sine t, one. t goes from zero to pi. Uh, and then you remember that after we get that parameterization of the curve, we find the derivative. Um, so negative sine, cosine, and zero. Um, and then we rewrite the vector field in terms of the parameter, right? Where we use the components of R as the substitutions for x, y, and z. So x will be replaced with cosine z, cosine t, y will be replaced with sine t, and z would be replaced with one. Whatever the components of your parameterization are. And you put those you know, in for x, y, and z in the vector field. That'll rewrite the vector field in terms of the parameter t. All right, so first component is negative 18 y, z. Um, that'll be negative 18 times sine t. The z is just one. Uh, second component, 18 x, z. So 18 cosine t, again, z is one. And then the third component, 12 times quantity x squared plus y squared. Since x and y are cosine and sine, that x squared plus y squared is cosine squared plus sine squared, which is one. And so you just get a 12 here. All right. Uh, so to finish up, we would do the dot product of f and r prime, um, which are these two. We would multiply them component-wise, and then we would add up those products, and that's going to be our integrand. So multiplying the first components, negatives cancel, and you get 18 sine squared t. Second components, you get 18 cosine squared t. And then third components, you get zero. Sine squared plus cosine squared is one. And so this is just 18. And you would integrate from zero to two pi. All right. So that would be the line integral. Um, both these integrals, once we get them set up and simplified, are actually pretty simple. Um, but I have us kind of pause here uh, set up the other integral, uh, and then do the comparison, which will be more useful later on when one of these might be uh, a lot better of a choice. Um, you can also kind of look at the difficulty of going through these steps and making your decision of which one of these integrals you want to do. But we definitely want to do them both now because we're just trying to learn Stokes' theorem and how that works. All right, let's see the other side of Stokes' theorem where we do a surface integral for the vector field. Um, we, again, already set up this parameterization for the paraboloid, and uh, I think we said it was u cosine v and u sine v and then u squared. Uh, and then we're going to get the tangent vectors, so tu, these are derivatives with respect to u, uh, cosine v sine v to u. 
and then TV. These are partial derivatives of R with respect to V. So negative U um, sine V, uh, U cosine V, and zero. And then we do the cross product. All right, so kind of make your matrix here, put in I, J, K, and then do the determinant of that matrix. So for I, we've got zero minus uh, two U squared cosine V. For J, we've got zero minus minus, but then there's a negative out front of the whole thing. So negative two U squared sine V. Uh, and then for K, uh, we don't get the zero there, but we got uh, cosine squared uh, plus sine squared. Uh, and so that's just going to be u. All right, so what you want to do then is check that this vector is, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> oriented the right way. <clears throat> uh, we are orienting upwards. So you want to pick a point on the surface, find the value of this normal vector, and make sure it's pointing in the same direction. And remember that V is acting kind of like theta and U is acting like R. Um, and so it'd probably be good again just to, um, we can do it right up at the boundary at the top and that should still work. Um, and so that's when uh, U equals one and V equals zero. So that corresponds to the point when X is one and Y is zero and Z is one. So we can put this point on 0, 1, 0, um, and then we can evaluate this uh, vector. If V is uh, 0, cosine of V is 1, and you get a 2, and then you get a negative 2, and then you get a 1. So 2, negative 2, 1 would be the vector. Let's see if that uh, works when we do a graph. So first, let's plot the point 1, 0, 1. And so you can see that point there on the surface. And then let's put in our vector, which was 2, negative 2, 1. Let's see if I feels like I might have made a mistake here. Two negative two one. All right. So I was realizing when I did the graph that it uh didn't look right, uh, you know, even before I translated the vector that did not look like a normal to that surface. Um, and looking back, that helped me find a mistake. And that's part of doing this is a validation. Um, I believe I'm missing a negative right here. So when I did that first cross product term, it would be zero minus 2u times u cosine v, which is negative 2u squared cosine v. Um, and that means that this would be negative 2, negative 2, 1. So let's try that. Mm. 
second. And then we take that vector and go to tools and vector from a point, click on the vector, click on the point, and that looks right. So we no longer need the original vector or that extra point it gives us. Actually, that still doesn't quite look right. Uh, and that's because if V is zero, uh, sine of V would also be zero. So that's supposed to be a zero. So um, that's not a mistake with any of the work we'll continue with, but uh, definitely worth noting. So it should be negative two, zero, one. Uh, one more mistake, I'm gonna have to redo this video. Sorry about that. Um, so let's go to negative two, zero, one. And now let's vector from a point. Oh, I need that vector there. Vector from a point, click on the vector, click on the point. And then let's get rid of those. And that's what you wanted to see, that it actually looks like the normal on the inside of that surface. All right. Um, and then, of course, most what we originally were seeking out is that we had the orientation correct. The problem said to be oriented upward, and we are indeed oriented upward. So if you're oriented the wrong way, what would you do? You just uh, take the vector in the opposite direction, right? And so you'd take the opposite of each component in TU cross TV um, and get sort of the left-hand uh, cross product. Um, so that happens sometimes, just depending on how you do your parameterization and, and how they orient the surface. Um, and it's not a problem. You just uh, double check that that one still looks like it's the normal. All right. We are now ready to move on um, to finding the curl of the vector field. Uh, it feels like it's been a little while since we did that. So curl is also kind of a cross product, right, um, of the partial derivative operator, um, del, and the vector field. So I would, again, set up kind of a, a matrix and in the second row, you've got the partial derivative operators. Uh, in the first row, you've got your unit basis factors. And in the third row, you should have your component functions from your vector field. So we've got negative 18yz, 18xz, and then 12x squared plus y squared z. And then we take a cross product of that. So we do the y derivative of 12 x squared plus y squared z, um, which would give us uh, 24 y z. Uh, minus the z derivative of 18 x z, which is minus 18 x. All right, and then for the j component, we've got a negative, and then x derivative of this is 24xz minus uh, the z derivative of negative 18yz, so plus 18y. And for the last one, we've got the x derivative of 18xz, so 18z, uh, minus the y derivative of negative 18yz, so plus 18z. We can actually simplify that last one. Uh, it gives us 36z, right? 18z and 18z. All right. So that's the curl of the vector field. Now it's in terms of x, y, and z. Next, you want to substitute 
the parameterization uh, to get it in terms of u and v. So it'd be saying x is u cosine v, y is u sine v, and z is u squared. So 24yz, uh, we place the y with u sine v and the z with u squared and get 24u uh, cubed sine v. 18x is 18u cosine v. Go ahead and distribute that negative. Negative 24xz is negative 24u cubed cosine v. And then negative 18y is negative 18u sine v. And then the last component, 36z, is 36u squared. All right, last step before we integrate is to take the dot product of the curl with the normal vector. So the tu cross tv is dotted with the curl of f. So we're going to multiply those components um, to get this integrand. And I'm really running out of room here, huh? So I think I'm going to erase these results from before. We'll do it up here. All right, so multiplying those first components, I got negative two u squared cosine v multiplied with 24 u cubed sine v minus 18 u cosine v. So there's a lot going on there. Um, let's go ahead and just distribute it out, I guess. So negative two times 24 is negative 48. And then u squared and u cubed is u to the fifth. And then cosine, sine, we'll write it as sine, cosine. And then there's a second term, right? Um, negative 2 and negative 18 is positive 36. u squared and u is u cubed. Cosine, cosine, cosine squared. All right, so that's the first uh, product. Doing the second components, I got negative 2 u squared sine v. Let's multiply with negative 24 u cubed cosine v. Uh, negative 2 and negative 24 is a positive 48. u squared and u cubed is u to the fifth. And again, I get sine cosine. So those are going to cancel out, which is nice. Um, negative 2 u squared sine v times negative 18 u sine v. Uh, give me a positive 36 u cubed sine squared v, right? And then those are going to add up and just give me 36 u cubed. And then the last one's the easy one. It's because it's really just u times 36 u squared, which is another 36 u cubed for a total of 72 u cubed. So that all simplifies to 72 u cubed. That's going to be integrated. Now, I don't have the uh, limits here, but when we did this parameterization before, I believe we wrote those down. Um, remember that v is like theta, and so v goes from 0 to 2 pi. And then u is kind of like r, and that goes from 0 to 1, right? So we'll be doing the integral uh, du dv, zero, u goes from 0 to 1, v goes from 0 to 2 pi, and that is our other integral. All right. So back to the Stokes theorem kind of analysis, the first integral was 0 to, eight. Zero to 2 pi, of 18 dt. That's what the line integral simplified to. And then the double integral was 0 to 2 pi, 0 to 1, 
72 u cubed du dv. So looking at which one is easier, um, they're both pretty simple, but obviously the first one is easier. The integrand is a constant, which is simpler than having to use the power rule for the second one. Uh, plus it's a single integral, so the double integral is, is going to be more work. So I would say the easier one is integral from 0 to 2 pi of 18 dt, um, which is just going to give us 18 times 2 pi, right, or 36 pi. Um, but for the validation, I would say try to do it with the harder integral, which is still isn't that much harder. Um, integrating 72 u cubed with respect to u, we would get 72 over 4 u to the fourth, uh, where u is evaluated from 0 to 1. Um, so that's just 72 over 4, uh, which is 18. Right? And then integrate that from 0 to 2 pi with respect to v which is going to give you the same result, oh, 36 pi. So Stokes' theorem says these should match up to be the same, and indeed they are both giving us 36 pi, uh, and that is using Stokes' theorem. Uh, all right, so there's one more theorem. I'm going to do another video with uh, the divergence theorem, um, but that's Stokes' theorem, and we're almost at the end.